The Life of Nichiren Daishonin Nichiren was a unique figure in the history of Buddhism in Japan. He was a prophet with unwavering conviction that he was the messenger of Buddha. He persisted through hardship and persecution, and had confidence in the future of his religion and country. He was born in 1222 as the son of a fisherman and died in 1282 as a saint and prophet. Nichiren lived during a significant epoch in Japan's history, where new energies and inspirations were needed in political, social, religious, and moral aspects. For 60 years, he fought against the prejudices of his time and gave warnings to the authorities and the people, not just in religious matters, but also in state affairs. He was a strong, eloquent, and tender-hearted man who was one of the most learned and earnest people of his time. Nichiren's personality was a product of his time, but he lived in both the past and the future. He was convinced of his predestined message and aspired for the future realization of his ideals. Nearly 700 years had passed since Buddhism was introduced to Japan. It became the state religion, and its hierarchies had attained power and dignity, but corruption of the clergy was becoming appalling. The central government, established since the 7th century, was disintegrating due to the degeneration of the court bureaucracy. The actual power was transferred to the hands of military clans. The change from luxury and grandeur to the establishment of military dictatorship at Kamakura in an eastern province was significant to the people. The cherry blossoms in full bloom were suddenly scattered by a frosty storm, and people were aware of the great changes happening around them. In addition to these changes, the minds of Buddhist leaders were in turmoil due to the prophecy of a great crisis. An old Buddhist tradition divided the Buddhist religion into three periods after the death of its founder. The first thousand years were the age of the perfect law, the second millennium was the age of the copied law, and the third age, the ten thousand years after that, was to be the age of the latter law, a reign of vice and strife. Though there were minor variations in the tradition as regards the time divisions, all Japanese Buddhists believed in the apocalyptic legend as a whole. Since they put Buddha's death in 949 BC, they believed that the last of the three ages began in the year 1052 AD, 24 years after the death of the regent Mishinaga. The thought of what form of Buddhism would be best suited to the coming days of degeneration occupied the minds of many Buddhist leaders since the 9th century. Saicho founded a new center of Buddhism on Mount Hiei, near the then new capital Miyako in the beginning of the 9th century, as a preparation for the approaching days of the Third Age. In Japan, Buddhism had become the state religion with powerful hierarchies, but corruption was rampant. The central government was disintegrating, and power was shifting to the military clans. The Buddhist leaders were also in turmoil, as an old tradition predicted a great crisis for Japan and the world. They believed in three periods of the Buddhist religion after the founder's death. The third period, known as the Latter Law, was supposed to be a reign of vice and strife, and it was believed to have started in 1052 AD. Saicho had founded a new center of Buddhism in the 9th century, meant to prepare for the approaching days of the latter law. Nichiren emerged as the most ardent follower of Saicho, warning of the dangers of the latter days. The Hojo family had taken over the power of the ruling clan Minamoto, ruling with the title of Shikin, or commissioners. They were famous for their strict execution of justice and simplicity of administration, but their modesty was seen as a means to their ambition to secure popularity. The imperial family and the titulary dictator were pushed aside as the Hojos became the real rulers of the nation. While the country was at peace, there was a feeling among the thoughtful minority that the legitimate rulers, the descendants of the sun goddess, were not actually in charge. In the early 13th century, Japan was ruled by the Hojo family, who had taken power from the Minamoto clan. The Hojo rulers were known for their strict justice and efficient administration, but they were also seen as usurpers by those who believed that Japan should be ruled by the legitimate imperial family. In 1221, the imperial party plotted against the Hojo government, but the plot failed and the Hojos gained even more power. The discontent among those who opposed the Hojos grew deeper after this event, but their cause was already lost politically. It was during this time that Nichiren, a religious leader, appeared and spoke out against the Hojo government. He believed that Japan would be ruined unless the people were governed by rulers who were legitimate both in title and authority. This viewpoint attracted many warriors who were imperialists or malcontents against the existing regime. Nichiren's teachings were deeply influenced by his religious fervor and his belief in the importance of restoring the fundamental principle of national life. However, the Hojo government saw him as a traitor and treated him as such. Nichiren saw issues with the religious conditions in Japan, which were closely related to the political and social disorders at the time. 
There was a plan by Dengyo, a reformer of the 9th century, to establish the center of Japanese Buddhism on Mount Hiei and unify its church organization, but this ideal of a state church was only partially realized. The relationship between the church hierarchy and the government bureaucracy became corrupted, with the government falling into the hands of the Fujiwara oligarchy who supported the church with its rituals and mysteries. The priesthood became tools for the ambitious aristocrats by promising them the supernatural aid of religion and supplying them with elaborate ceremonies. The result was the collapse of the effeminate court nobility and the rise of the military class. Nichiren adhered to Dungyo's ideal and believed that the political disintegration was a necessary consequence of the ecclesiastical degeneration. Nichiren attacked the existing regime, both political and ecclesiastical, severely. He believed that the Buddhist church's promiscuous adoption of Shingon mysticism, a form of Buddhism contaminated with Hinduism and other alien elements, was the chief cause of its degeneration. Nichiren believed that adhering faithfully and exclusively to the scripture, the Lotus of Truth, was the sole way to restore Dungyo's religion. He saw the worship of the Buddha Amida, a special development of Buddhist faith that emphasized simple-hearted devotion to Amida, as a curse. He thought it was a desertion of the Buddha Sakyamuni, the genuine founder of Buddhism and the Lord of the Universe as revealed in the Lotus of Truth. The piety of multitudes toward Amida Buddha was, in Nichiren's eyes, a manifestation of the hysterical tendency of the age. He believed that Shingon mysticism was a religion that was ruining the vitality of the nation. Nichiren's third target was a group called the Ritsu, which was a Buddhist school of strict monastic discipline. In the 12th century, as a response to the corruption of the hierarchy, reformers attempted to impose strict observance of the monastic rules. These leaders systematized the principles of Buddhist ethics from the standpoint of monastic discipline. However, the Ritsu developed a one-sided rigorism that eventually became formalism. The focus on training in morality led to practicing virtue only for individual salvation. Self-satisfaction evolved into self-conceit, which often led practitioners to use their achievements as a means to attract popular admiration and reverence. In addition, the slavish and formal adherence to disciplinary rules that were originally intended for Hindu monks aroused opposition from those who followed Japanese customs and ideas. As a nationalist and proponent of a broader Buddhism, Nichiren vehemently protested against the Ritsu Buddhists, whom he regarded as traitors to their country. During Nichiren's time, a new school of Buddhism called Zen, or the Meditative School, emerged, which further contributed to the religious confusion. Zen focused on intuitive insight and practiced meditation to reveal the purity of the soul. The master would give riddle-like questions that disciples had to solve by avoiding traditional reasoning and seeking unexpected illumination through meditation. This appealed to military men as a way to maintain composure and prepare for action. However, Zen rejected systematic thought on religion and ethics, and its emphasis on individualism often led to selfishness. Nichiren saw this as a rebellion against true Buddhism and a threat to Japan's national integrity. Nichiren also viewed three other schools of Buddhism as curses of the age. Shingon occultism was believed to be ruining the nation, Ritsu Methodism was seen as betraying Japan's customs to foreign influence, and Amida Buddhism was leading people to the hells. Nichiren was strongly opposed to these schools because he believed in the teachings of the Lotus Scripture as the genuine and deepest truth of Buddhism.